Today, uh, in our very first session, we are having with us Dr. Sanjay Jain, sir. Uh, Dr. Sanjay Jain is teacher at National Law School of India, Bangalore. He has completed LLB, LM, and PhD in uh, feminism and constitutional law from Rashtra Santa Tukurji Maharashtra University, Nagpur. Sir has cracked net examination in the year 1995. Uh, sir started uh, his teaching on contract basis at the Department of Law, Nagpur University in 1996. Recently, sir has appointed as a country advisor in India for project inclusive public space, law, universal, universality, and difference in law states from 2022 to 2023. The project funder is uh, European Research Council, post institution University of Leeds, primary investigator, uh, Professor Anna Lawson. This project is cross country uh, study of right. Accessibility of PWDs involving six states from Europe, Asia, Africa. So has received a number of awards, including most efficient uh, disabled empl employee, national award at uh, auspicious hands of of the then president of India, Dr. APJ Abdul Kalam sir, in uh, 2004, best employee with disability 2017 award from Swaraj Viklang Seva Samiti, Allahabad. Uh, Mrs. Pillu uh, Doraf uh, Kambata Memorial Award in 1999 for outstanding blind employee by NAB uh, India. Sir has published six books and a number of articles in books and journals. He has participated and attended more than 150 international, national, state level seminars, conferences, and workshops on contemporary legal issues. Sir has uh, presented dozens of papers at national and international seminars. Thank you, sir, for accepting our uh, invitation. Over to you, sir. Okay. Uh, thank you very much for this uh, opportunity to have a to give me an to 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 kind of uh, me to speak to my mind on a topic which is very challenging and but. Uh, at the same time, a very uh, important topic uh, because, you know, uh, the role of technology, what technology can do to us nowadays. Uh, and I, I need not emphasize too much about it. Just two, three days ago, one of my friends who is a very perennially disabled person, he has uh, involuntary moments in his body and when he was handling mobile mobile phone by mistake uh, due to involuntary moment he clicked some link and he lost all uh, his money uh, uh, from his bank account so this goes to show that you know uh, although technology can prove very empowering it may also have some unintended consequences and therefore it is important while remaining alive to the uh, to the use and to the empowering capacity potency of technology uh, we have to be also agile and we should be also uh, very particular very scrupulous about you know how uh, we should make use of technology now, recently, a very interesting judgment was delivered by Nagpur Bench, Bombay High Court, on use of social media, how we should express ourselves on social media. And basically, uh, I'm expected to talk on social media, freedom of expression, and technology. So, uh, this judgment may prove to be a good beginner a very interesting uh, starting point to uh, initiate discussion now all of all of us have this knack nowadays this this habit sorry of you know keeping a particular status on whatsapp uh, in fact our day begins by looking at our status by keeping our status and also looking at the status of other friends uh, with whom we are connected. But what happens if uh, when we keep 
the status, maybe consciously or unconsciously, while keeping such a status, if we are not careful, if we become kind of casual or maybe uh, we become kind of indifferent, and suppose uh, our status uh, uh, on the WhatsApp is such uh, that it results, it, it, it kind of uh, creates hatred, uh, creates uh, indignation in, mind, in the minds of people of a particular community, for example, religious community. So what should be the stand of the state in such a scenario. Now, one standard argument which is presented in this case by the petitioner was that, okay, it is a fully encrypted interaction between him and his friend circle. And therefore, he did not intend to uh, circulate his status to people of the so-called means of some other community. So his uh, status was basically for himself and maybe for uh, maybe for his uh, for, for, for his friend circle. And therefore he was trying to argue that uh, you know uh, the, the status had nothing to do with hurting the feelings or sentiments of a particular uh, religious community. In other words, the argument of the petitioner was that it was a affair between him and his friend circle. And therefore, if uh, <clears throat> by any chance the, the status got circulated, and if it is seen by somebody whom he did not intend to uh, do, uh, such a status, then uh, he cannot be uh, held liable uh, for the kind of allegations uh, he was facing. And therefore, he contended before the court uh, that, you know, the charges of uh, spreading of religious hatred, you know, 295A and certain provisions of the IT Act, those uh, charges uh, must be dropped. That was the case. Now, it was not a runoff mill case wherein the court would easily give its judgment because it is a case involving the interface of uh, constitutional law and technology because just as every citizen have a fundamental right we all of us we are we are we we all have vested uh, fundamental rights uh, so fundamental right to freedom of speech and expression for example so uh, can my fundamental right to freedom of speech and expression which i exercise through uh, social media by by kind of speaking to my mind or by expressing myself can such right be regulated or be taken away uh, by court? That is the question. Now, now, Bombay High Court, Nagpur bench took a very interesting stand and I think a uh, right stand. Court held that when you use, when you are on social media, you are not delivering a speech to a limited audience. You are not interacting with a particular group. In fact, when you are on social media, you do not know uh, how many people would watch you or your uh, statements because it is totally beyond your control once the information is on social media. Like WhatsApp, for example, it is beyond your control. You can control uh, You can control. Uh, you can control the flow of information to an extent. You can control to whom 
the information must go and must uh, not go to an extent. But suppose one of your friends uh, who has seen the status, if he uh, forwards the status to somebody else, then what? So uh, when you send message to somebody, uh, the communication between you and him uh, or her may be totally encrypted. But what if she or he uh, forwards your message? Or can you pass the responsibility on the person forwarding the message? So court held that we have to observe extra responsibility. We have to be more vigilant and more sensitive when we are on the social media because be it because of me or be it because of somebody else, if the message uh, reaches the wrong hands or if message is conveyed wrongly or in a distorted manner, it may result in disharmony, it may result in lack of, uh, I mean, a lot of disaffection amongst uh, people. And it is not really affordable any longer that uh, due to some post on social media you know uh, there should be religious disharmony so in akola recently we all know what happened due to some post on the social media there were riots and as a result of the riots there was damage to the property and uh, there was also loss of lives, some people died. So the implications of, you know, social media usage, they are enormous. And therefore we have to be mindful of the use of social media. This is about one aspect of the social media. There is another aspect too, I mean, how to regulate social media. Now, if you look at the constitution of India, and uh, if you take into account fundamental right to freedom of expression, freedom of expression is not absolute. When the constitution was inaugurated, the freedom of expression was fairly broad. There were very few restrictions on freedom of expression. But in 1950 itself, with the first first amendment, you know, the, this right was curtailed by the parliament and the very constituent assembly, which was the provisional parliament, a unicameral body, that body itself imposed more restrictions on freedom of, restriction, freedom of expression than uh, they were in existence when the constitution uh, came into uh, force. <clears throat> Nevertheless, it is very clear that uh, it is one thing to regulate the freedom of expression of social media and quite another to also uh, also <laughs> and quite another to uh, you know quite another to uh, ensure that uh, speech and expression on social media is regulated. The basic difference between the two boards is this, that uh, of social media, state can intervene, state can by law impose reasonable restrictions. We can develop. <laughs> We can develop uh, rules and regulations uh, to to control the flow of freedom of expression. But when we are on social media, now it is mostly beyond the reach of the state, and therefore question arises: how to ensure uh, that freedom of expression is balanced with the uh, interests of the other interests, including the interests of religious minorities or the interests of uh, certain 
religious uh, community, uh, etc. Now, <clears throat> Constitution of India is silent. It, it does not have any uh, solution as such to directly regulate the uh, social media. But Information Technology Act, of course, creates some offenses to ensure that people conduct themselves in a befitting manner uh, on social media. Now, one of the uh, one of the instruments or one of the approaches to uh, kind of uh, create a regulatory framework to operate on social media is a internal regulation mechanism. So every platform of social media has its own internal uh, kind of internal ombudsman like situation where uh, the posts on the WhatsApp or on Facebook or on other uh, social media, the int internal team, internal vigilant team, you know, uh, it ensures that unwanted, hateful, prejudicial messages, they are not put on the on these platforms. But the problem may be that how to filter unwanted messages from the wanted one. Because uh, when you take into account the flow of messages, when you take into account the flow of information through uh, social media, it's infinite. And therefore, it is humanly not possible. So we have, we have to use technology, algorithms, and then based on the algorithms, algorithmic statistics, depending upon which words you use on social media, they have this system of, you know, having keywords. And based on the assessment or evaluation of the keywords, they could find out whether a particular post on the social media is objectionable. But again, this is algorithmic. And of course, artificial intelligence cannot substitute intelligent uh, intelligence of uh, human beings. So therefore, self-regulation is, is there. But how to ensure uh, that this self-regulation is not partial, it is not tilted in favor of a particular community or so uh, it has to be ensured therefore that the internal mechanism which is used by the uh, social media this internal mechanism is transparent this internal mechanism is based on the constitutional culture and this internal mechanism does not unduly curtail the freedom of expression of the public but at the same time also does not overly uh, therefore it is it is it is very important that there is a there is vigilance uh, but at the same time, there is difference. So a fine balance uh, has to be maintained by the regulators uh, to ensure that uh, they are not unduly sensitive to the information, but they are also not unduly differential. So that is the second aspect. Ki the internal regulation has to be there, but the internal regulation uh, needs to be uh, defined, it needs to be uh, within the bounds of the law and in consonance uh, with freedom of speech and expression. Uh, the third point which I would like to stress in this connection is that there is also a role of intermediaries, service providers, uh, because uh, service providers may also uh, probably be aware of what is going on. Suppose uh, as a service provider, I know that 
uh, some elements are trying to disrupt uh, the culture or disrupt the environment by uh, spreading fake messages so uh, the service providers intermediary may, may also uh, then come into action and take necessary measures to stop uh, anti national activities or anti institutional uh, activities there is also another aspect of technology and constitution you know constitution is a black letter law and it is not possible for any law including the constitutional law to keep in pace uh, with technology technology every day there are breakthroughs but you, you cannot have everyday breakthroughs uh, when it comes to constitutional law or for that matter legislations because if you want to enact a constitutional law or amend the constitution or if you want to enact any new law uh, we all know the arduousness of the process so the process is prolonged protracted and therefore uh, and it's very political so uh, there is also no guarantee that uh, if you table the legislation the legislation uh, would be passed another important aspect of the technology is in the context of disability in the context of you know uh, disability also technology plays a huge role for example reasonable accommodation so principle of reasonable accommodation would involve uh, technology introduction of technology technology which is user friendly technology which uh, recognizes takes into account the special needs of, of people with disabilities uh, so uh, therefore that uh, technology and uh, technology uh, you know uh, in promoting the rights of pwds uh, technology uh, playing the role of enabler to make certain rights uh, realizable you know for example freedom of expression if i want to exercise my freedom of expression but if i don't have the books in the accessible format if i'm able, not able to read the information available on the computer uh, on with the help of a screen reading software or if i'm not able to access certain information on the screen by by using braille display uh, then probably rights in the sense uh, of you know instruments of you know enhancing the capabilities of individuals so right sets capabilities the goal of right sets ca ca capabilities may be uh, difficult so therefore it is again important uh, that you know uh, we realize the potential of technology for the empowerment of or rehabilitation of these uh, marginalized uh, section of the uh, society yeah. another important thing about technology and the constitution is recently we have Gone to the court i am one of the litigants and we have challenged the constitutional validity of imposition of gst on gadgets which are used by people with disability on a day-to-day -day basis like my walking stick my laptop my reading machine or my braille printer and other things so uh, because these gadgets they are not external to us they are internal to us right without gadgets our life is not a fulfilled uh, life uh, we have constant uh, struggle therefore if we are generating some resources to buy braille printer and other, like such other like products should government impose goods and services tax on these technological innovations so in my opinion you are if you are if you are interested in imposing gst on gst in such cases then probably you are imposing gst on the body 
you are imposing GST on the limbs and the other parts of the body of the people in this entity. So, uh, therefore, it is important that uh, we upkeep, we keep up, we continue our, st our struggle to ensure that to access technology, we are provided the necessary resources. And uh, these resources are often catered by, you know, either the state commissioner of disability or the de de district magistrates, DM collectors. So therefore it is very important that, you know, uh, you don't look at taxes on gadgets like taxes on any other things. When you are taxing gadgets, you are almost taxing our bodies because these gadgets are internal to us. These gadgets, though they, 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 they come to us externally, once we are, we are in tune with uh, such uh, uh, products, we have a, a, an accord uh, with such products. You know, these products become the part of our body. Therefore, I need, uh, for example, I need a laptop or accessible phone for effective expression. <clears throat> and and for uh, uh, the effective expression, I need uh, gadgets. So I would require a computer as a blind person. My friend who has a hearing impairment may require hearing aids. Or if my friend who is on a wheelchair wants to go and deliver a speech, he requires accessible, uh, adaptable uh, wheelchair. So therefore, again, technology directly or indirectly is playing a role, uh, uh, enabler for the full realization of uh, the rights, for enhancing the capabilities. Because if rights are just understood as intrinsic goods, uh, and if, uh, uh, in terms of intrinsic goods, only we, we just pay attention to rights. But if we don't look at rights as you know, kind of pills to uh, kind of boost the capabilities, uh, then, you know, rights talk is just like any other talk, okay? So, uh, this is one aspect, this is another aspect of technology, uh, you know. Now, another interesting aspect of technology is, you know, we are, we are able to liquidate the distance. Like I'm able to speak with you through in a virtual mode. Uh, but again, there is an issue of access. What happens if I don't have access to uh, such a technology? If I don't have access to WebEx, for example, I'm not able to subscribe uh, to uh, the services of um, uh, platforms like Google, uh, or uh, Facebook, etc. So again, although uh, I'm able to liquidate the distance, I'm able to come in contact with so many people from different places around the world simultaneously, but this all is contingent on my access. Therefore, again, access, equity and access. You know. So do you have equitable access? Do you have affordable access? And this, uh, issue particularly became very crucial during the COVID uh, when classes were on online, when the evaluation uh, was online. And although initially it was thought that COVID is going to go away very soon and this situation of being online would be an aberration. But now with the passage of time, we have realized that now we have, we have reached a new normal. Now it is, it would be in fact abnormal if there is an opposition to work from home or the use of technology to work, make oneself more equipped, right? So therefore that is uh, another aspect, the access and the uh, equity. What else? Uh, yeah, 
uh, when you are talking about media social media uh, apart from internal regulation by the administration of a particular platform like the way facebook or what uh, social mm-hmm. facebook or you know google meet uh, etc can we can we have a, 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 can we have a, an impartial neutral panel so there is a neutral panel consisting of some very prominent people so this panel keeps a watch on the facebook and other social media and just like editors guild this panel makes uh, suggestions uh, to the twitter to the facebook whether what posts should be off the media and what post can be uh, made should be can be kept for a longer uh, duration so for example one our vice chancellor uh, in Bay, from nlsiu he is one of the members of the uh, independent watchdog which uh, which which has a very close eye on the facebook and uh, such other such other platforms uh, now these uh, neutral uh, committees or neutral bodies you know they play a very crucial role because they can act as a bridge uh, between the actual users and those who are in in in, in middle positions maybe they are not direct management of the platform right but Uh, nevertheless uh, you know these uh, uh, these these interveners you know they may play a huge role uh, you know in ensuring uh, that what is what remains on media and what doesn't i would also now like to just shed a very briefly light on one issue internet shutdown whether internet shutdown is justified now in akola also there was internet shutdown for some time in kashmir there was an internet shutdown for longest duration probably more than a year so at uh, in anina era when our day begins by looking at our phones and our social media how far it is feasible to go for internet shutdown in the name of law and order right is another crucial challenge while concluding i would argue that constitution of india is illiquid because it doesn't have any cannot have the capacity or the potency uh, to deal with the onslaught of social media to take care of the media trial happening on the social media because basically social media is is cannot be regulated because you know the players responsible for social media they come from different parts of the countries so uh, the stakeholders you know are many uh, there is an enormous amount of complexity on about the structure of the programs which one wants to can run on the uh, social media etc so friends i have tried my level best to and of give an overview of technology and law and i wish to develop this topic further i would be very happy to take uh, questions and i would like to thank girish and other colleagues in post graduate department of law uh, to for having given me this excellent opportunity to, to have a dialogue with students on a topic which is mostly uh, overlooked and paid late less attention to so thank you thank you very much thank you very much sir but if you have any questions uh, kindly unmute yourself and ask uh, sanjeev jain sir or you can write it in the chat box as well good afternoon sir good afternoon uh i have a question um, yeah. few days back we had a lecture by uh, girish sir 
very yes. the uh, topic which you have also referred to today about uh, uh, the rights of disabled person as far as technology is concerned so my question to you sir is uh, whenever the technology is uh, adventing developing how can we deal with the situation where the disabled persons can take help of the technology maybe it will be a fundamental right well i have already told you that you can't look at technology discreetly technology as something yes. different yes. yes technology has to be seen simultaneously with uh, rights and the retrofitting of technology is a very undesirable uh, proposition because it, it becomes expensive and right. sometimes it becomes unfeasible so best course of action is to have a proper procurement policy uh, so that whenever you uh, uh, go for any technology, you ensure that inclusive technology is is bought by the institution. So far as rights enforcement is concerned, because you know all our fundamental rights have been enforced at a time when there was no social media. Therefore, I think uh, it is important that. Uh, either civil societies or government comes out with a white paper uh, on this issue because even algorithmic uh, uh, algorithmic interventions you know algorithmic interventions uh, may be very mechanical and it may exclude few it may include others so the criteria of exclusion and inclusion although may be machine determined uh, but those criteria may not be foolproof. It may do justice to some, but do injustice with others. So, indeed, I I, I repeat myself that you know technology is a catalyst. Technology is one of the driving forces. It is an impetus for the full and effective realization of fundamental rights or any other rights. Yes, sir. thank you, sir. Anyone else? Participants? If you have any questions, session you can ask by unmuting yourself. If there is no question, So, thank you so much, sir. On behalf of Postgraduate so. Teaching Department of Law, Rasha Sandhat Kuroji Maharaj, Nagpur University, I would like to extend my heartfelt gratitude to our esteemed guest, Dr. Sanjay Jain, sir, to share his expertise and knowledge on freedom of rights and expression and uh, social media. Uh, sir has very well explained to re, uh, how to regulate uh, the uh, social media. I think self-regulation is the best re uh, regulation. So uh, I think uh, this session will help uh, many research scholars to decide if specific relating to uh, freedom of expression and social media or constitution. Thank you so much, sir, for guiding uh, our research scholars. Thank you, sir. Thanks. Thanks.